You know, at different points this episode, I was really thinking like, yo, is Sari just falling in love with our boy Ko? Like the, the way that she was kind of like seeking him out, the way that she got excited when she saw him, the way that she spent time with him at the karaoke. I was thinking like all these thoughts as the episode was going on and come to find that Sari actually had her own love story, her own love interest, you know, somebody that she held... Maybe not, maybe she's not in love, but somebody that she held in higher regards to others was already there. And this was Mr. Drago. Uh, and I really enjoyed seeing this episode. And even though Ko was completely a part of this episode, and so was, you know, so was Nazuna in, in some regards. But one of the things that I always really praise anime about is when they can diverge or pivot to another character and the anime being just as interesting as it would be if it was about its main cast. And a lot of really, really good anime have done this. And the thing that makes them so special is when they pivot or when they move over to a side character and you don't have any less entertainment value than you do when they're when they have the main ones. Now, again, like the 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 caveat to that specific call out this episode is the fact that Ko was still a major part of this episode, but the episode was really focused on Siri, was really focused on Mr. Drago, Akun, whatever this guy's name is, and really her problems, her issues, the things that she was facing. And as I was watching this episode, one of the things that I guess I was, I don't say worried about, but one of the things that I was calling out to myself as I was watching early on the episode was, oh no, is Sari f falling in love with Ko as well? I was like, that's not good. Now going to kill her. And come to find that she essentially had her Ko. So in this Akun Drago guy, I, I like the Mr. Drago. Uh, in Mr. Drago, she has somebody who she has been spending time with. She has somebody who's she's been really like giving a part of herself and, you know, hanging out and playing games and somebody who's fulfilling an empty part of her life. She already had, which is the same thing that Nazuna now has in Ko. The only difference is Ko is 14 and this guy was, you know, of legal age. I think that's the only real difference is this guy's an adult and uh, Ko's a young boy. Otherwise, there's virtually no difference here, in at least in the in the hole or the space that they are taking up in Seri's life and, in Ko's case, Nazuna's life. And I really enjoyed watching it this episode, and we got to see Ko really intervene, but at the same time, we got to see him pull off a, a real win here by getting through to Seri and really kind of figuring out what the hell is wrong with you. And she's constantly complaining that other people are a hassle or other people are hard to deal with or annoying and things like that. But come to find that it's kind of the opposite. It's actually she's the she's the hassle. She's hard to deal with, you know. And when we kind of like got the or when she got the script flipped on her, I think she was starting to really like kind of put two and two together, which is what ended up coming of you know, the end of the episode where Akun's like, you know, at the end, of, I just don't want to be a part of, I just don't want to be a part of, apart from you. And Sari was like, I don't want to not be your friend kind of thing. And she's kind of like, you know, kind of like having that emotional awakening, you know, that attachment awakening during that time, this episode. And I thought that was really, really cool. You know what I mean? And you, you take all, you, you peel all of that back. And we also had this episode Really dope Sakuga, you know, you don't think you're going to get a little Sakuga this episode, but like the episode in the karaoke scene with Sari and Ko and Mr. Drago, you know, with her like pumping up about to kill him, like the different colors, the colorations, the different uh, hues of light that they ended up having was freaking beautiful and gorgeous. And I think from episode number one to now, I've always said this episode just oozes like 
hip hop and style and it's just so unique in the choices, the artistic choices it makes. And this episode was a fantastic showing of that uh, when it came to Siri kind of like getting angry, getting ready to kill all those moments. I think it was like flat out fantastic. Outside of that though, nothing else really happened this episode. Just a one really good episode focused on Siri focused on Akun. I do hope that they don't really diverge from it much more. I do want to find out what happens when you become offspring. Do you just immediately become a vampire? Is like, is it ASAP? Do you have to feed? Do you have to immediately go and create more offspring? I hope that we get more Akun just so that we kind of realize what's going to happen to Ko in a week, a month, a year, whenever that, whenever his, well, we know it's not a year, but you know, whenever his transition to a vampire happens, I'm very interested to see on like, what's the process? Is it just you know, vampire, now you just hang out at night? Is it vampire? You got to eat it, you know. Uh, I want to know just more about that transitional phase from human to vampire. Otherwise, really great episode. Another really solid uh, notch in the belt of Call of the Night. Really enjoyed this episode quite a bit. Uh, really enjoyed the different art and art style. I think this, this episode nailed it out the park. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. See you guys next week, my friends. Peace.